And now, stay tuned for the program that is rated tops in popularity for a longer period of time than any other West Coast program in radio history. The Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. Signal, the famous go-farther gasoline, invites you to sit back and enjoy another strange story by The Whistler. I am The Whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And now for the Signal Oil Company, the Whistler's strange story. Spell in green. <laughs> The quiet of the late night was broken only by the rapid click of a woman's heels on the sidewalk of the street that only an hour before had bustled with traffic and passing pedestrians. Nolan Norton stopped for a moment, looked up toward the light from a third-floor apartment, from it to the bottle she carried under one arm. Then she sighed, resumed her steps, and turned up the walk to the apartment building. She opened the front door and then made her way up to Chuck Williams' apartment on the third floor. Chuck! Chuck, it's Nola! Oh. Hi, Nola. Come on in. Is your copy ready? Nope. My copy is never ready. I... Nola. My dear, dear Nola, can it be that you've come calling with a gift? This liquor? It's more of a bribe. Oh. I thought if I brought this along as a reward, I might be able to deliver your column on time for once. Mm, my brand, too. And the seal isn't broken. I'm sure you can take care of that. It looks like I'm just the man for the job. Can't the drink wait, Chuck? Finish the column, and then you can have the whole bottle. Never put off till tomorrow what you can drink tonight, Nola. Join me? You know I don't drink. Well, not usually, but tonight you'll have a drink with me, Nola. Because I'm on strike against deadlines. Maybe against the whole world. Come on, Nola, join me. Oh, all right. I don't suppose one drink will hurt me. Not a go. You want me to finish your column, Chuck? I could, and you could finish your drinking, Fairtrade. Nope. I don't want you to write it, Nola, or rewrite it after I finish with it. You're supposed to be my assistant and researcher, my girl Friday, as the saying goes. And you know, some of my columns haven't been reading quite right to me the next day. Maybe you should know this. Whether I've been drinking or not, I always remember exactly what I've written. If you're referring to that item on Jack Winters, I got a last-minute tip. Pretty spicy bit of intrigue, I write and I legitimate, thought... straight-out stories. I don't like literary blackmail. I don't write it. I don't want you sticking any more stuff like that in it. It's what people like to read, And Chuck. a lot of people who believe that are writing columns for the people who like to read them. All right, Chuck, skip it. Finish the column, legitimate, straight-out, and as dull as you like. Careful, Nola. Your claws are showing. Mine thanks I get for bringing you a drink. Funny thing... Everyone else tries to keep me from drinking, especially Paul. But not you, Nora. You bring me liquor. Then ask only my thanks for it. In return for your having your daily column ready so I can get it in before the deadline. Finish it up, will you, Chuck? Not yet, no. I feel like talking. Maybe I'm all written out. Maybe the words will come only vocally now. I'm beginning to jam in my typewriter. Did you and Paul finish your play? Paul says we did. I still think he's got no third act. But he's so sure it's ready to go, he's leaving in a couple of days to take it to New York. Paul's leaving so soon? Yeah. You sort of light up for him, don't you? Oh, don't be silly, Chuck. Sure you do. You catch fire around him. Like those lucky emerald earrings of yours when they catch the light just so. The only time I ever think I see a woman behind that concrete facade you've built around yourself. I don't like that, Chuck. <laughs> You know something, Nola? I don't like you. I don't like you at all. My heart bleeds. I got you all figured, baby. It took me a while, but I finally caught on. Well, what are you doing, Chuck? Hello, there. Hello, Chronicle. 
Give me Mac on the copy desk. Not there. Okay, try Aegon Drake and rewrite. And Drake? Chuck Williams. I'm firing Nolan Norton, effective this minute. Wait, Make a note of it, will you? Why? For my own protection, of course. I'll explain to Mac in the morning. Chuck, what on like earth I are you... Like I said, th- I got you all figured. And I don't like you. You're drunk. <laughs> I'm sober, thinking sober. Come here, Nola. Come out on the balcony with me. I want to show you something. Oh, Chuck, you're not making any sense. I, I never don't know made what... such good sense. Look at it, Nola. The whole blessed city of the angels stretched out before you. Take it, Nola. It's just lying there waiting for your greedy little hands. Take it. All of it. But leave Paul alone. And leave me in my little column alone, too. Okay, Chuck. I'll take it. And Paul, if I want him. And your column, Nola, too, Nola, Chuck! Chuck! Look out! Nola! Nola! You fool. You should have known you couldn't stop me. Reduces engine wear 50%. You see it on billboards. Reduces engine wear 50%. You see it on signs, on banners, on window displays at signal service stations. Reduces engine wear 50%. It's today's best news for drivers. Today's biggest news in motor oil. For now, with amazing new signal premium motor oil, engine wear due to lubrication is reduced 50%. Just consider the savings this can mean to you. With new signal premium motor oil, your car should run twice as many miles before needing an overhaul due to engine wear. So you save on upkeep. If your car is not already an oil eater, new signal premium should double the period during which you'll continue to enjoy low oil consumption. So you save on oil. And although prices of practically everything have jumped, the miracle oil that gives you all these extra benefits has not been increased in price. So you'll save money, too, while you save your car by switching this week to Signal Premium, the amazing new motor oil that reduces engine wear due to lubrication 50%. Reduces engine wear 50%. Well, Nola, it all seems a long time ago, doesn't it? Chuck Williams' tragic fall from the balcony of his apartment was judged accidental by the authorities. And in the months that follow, you try to forget that terrible moment when you pushed him to his death. The panic that accompanied your escape out the back entrance to the building. And the frozen fear that engulfed you when you reached your own apartment to find that you'd lost one of your lucky emerald earrings. But that's all behind you now, Nola. You're sure you must have lost your earring in your hurried flight to your apartment because it never came up in the investigation following Chuck's death. But that was six months ago. Since then, you've had another made to match. And you wear them almost daily as you sit behind Chuck's old desk at the newspaper office, writing Chuck's old column. But uh, it's your column now, isn't it, Nola? Whoever you are, go away. I'm busy. If I'm bothering you, I'm delighted. Paul, Paul Wallace. But but you can't be here. You're in New York. That's the advantage of having a split personality. And anyway, (laughs) I got back from New York about a week ago. A week? And you're just now looking me up? I must be pretty far down on your list. Depends on where you start reading, Nola. Besides, I've been busy planning a party. Want you to come. I'd love to. How long do you intend to go on without kissing me? Uh, someone might come in. Oh, no one comes in here without knocking. Got them all terrified, have you? Racked with fear. Now, how about that kiss? Mm, this place reminds me too much of Chuck. Oh. Well, I have an apartment. I'm at the Sunset Castle. So you finally have your castle. Well, I always knew you'd get it, uh, one way or another. The castles get lonely sometimes, Paul. Well, I'd like to rescue the lonely princess. How about Wednesday? That's when I'm giving the party. That's also three days away. Best I can do, Nola. All right, Wednesday then. But why a party? Why not just the two of us? 
We're celebrating the flop of our play. Oh, darling, how novel to celebrate a flop. But isn't it rather ghoulish, considering... Considering the co-author's dead? Chuck would love it. He always claimed we'd never get out of Boston without a good third act. Is that why it didn't go over? Who knows? Chuck was the brains behind it. But he's dead. Play took a dive. I'm broke. So we'll celebrate. Mm. Who's coming? Lots of people. Select group, of course. Janet Kimber? Sure, Janet, who has a better right than the leading lady to toast the flop of a play. Oh, indeed. But we'll need you at our haunted little soiree, Nola. No, I'm flattered that I am. I'm really flattered, but the notice is rather short. I'm booked up for weeks. Riding high, eh? With a pencil for a broomstick. Oh, that's the kind of dialogue you and Chuck had in your play. No wonder it died. <laughs> Still the same sweet Nola. I've twice the reader's Chuck had. So I've heard. But be careful. Don't let the column jinx you. Now, what's that supposed to mean? Hmm, nothing much, I guess. Only it's too bad we can't get a spirit flash for Chuck. Maybe the column is bad luck. Chuck was his own bad luck. Or maybe he just tangled with the wrong kind of luck. Hmm, well, I don't worry about luck, Paul. You mean your emerald earring? I see you still wear them. I always will. Then you'll wear them Wednesday when I come to your castle and sweep you to my party. Mm, perhaps you didn't hear me, Paul. I told you I was busy. I'm booked for weeks. See you Wednesday, Nola, about eight. Who do you think you are? You can't drop in here after being away so long and tell me when you'll see Wednesday, me. Wednesday, Nola. I won't go to your stupid party. All right. All right. I've waited six months. I can wait until Wednesday. <laughs> Yes, Nola, you can wait a few more days, can't you? You resent the way Paul takes you for granted. But he's come back from New York in defeat. His play has failed. And that failure may provide the key to your success with Paul. You were willing to kill Chuck to get his column. You're perfectly willing to destroy anything or anyone who stands between Paul and you. And when Wednesday evening comes, you're in your apartment, busily setting down a special pattern of destruction. Yes? Uh, Mr. Paul Wallace in the lobby, Miss Norton. Oh, put him on, will you please? The lady with the stiletto. If the point is safely buried, I'll be right up. <laughs> Take your time. I still have a paragraph to do. It might interest you. I'm doing a piece on the star of your late lamented play. Janet Kimber? Mm-hmm. I saw her screen test today, on purpose. I know she was good. The New York critic said she carried the play on her back. Or maybe she should have stayed in New York. Sometimes Klieg lights aren't kind to a novice. Yeah? Well, I'll have a drink while you finish. One drink, one poison paragraph. Now you handle the drink. I can still manage the poison. How'd you like my castle, Paul? I have to admit you've done well, Nola. It's all part of a plan, darling. Plans don't always work out, you know. Chuck had plans for a Broadway hit. Chuck was just unlucky. And yet he had a talisman, too. His gray sweater. He was wearing it the night he fell off that balcony. Well, Paul, well, this is where Chuck used to live. I know. Uh, didn't I tell you? I live here now. No. No, you didn't. Is this where the party is? Yes. Does it make any difference, Nola? No. No, of course not, Paul. Why should it? But it does make a difference, doesn't it, Nola? You never expected to come near Chuck's old apartment again. And just the sight of the drab gray building chills you with fear. The same gripping fear that sent you running from it six months ago. The street is once again well-traveled and brightly lighted, unlike the last time you were here. You don't dare look up, do you, Nola? You're afraid you might see the balcony. So you fix your gaze straight ahead as you and Paul start up the walk. But the ghosts of past parties and past friends walk the long, dark corridor of your memory, and you shiver. I suppose it's the same old third-story apartment. Except for a few renovations that broke Mrs. Mm. Geisler's heart and hers. She might have had the building painted. Oh, not Mrs. Geisler. She's only doing the things the building inspector insisted upon. But anyway, it's home. Home? 
hoping you could have so much more, Paul. I like the old friends and the old street. Come on. Let's go in and exercise a few ghosts. Whoever you are, welcome. I'm just fixing a... Aegon Drake, how could you get away from the re-ride desk? Oh, I can always find a way to take in a party by Paul. I'll get us a drink, Nola. Ah, it's good to see you again, Nola. Your success has made you exclusive. No, just busy. Mm -hmm, but not as busy as I thought you'd be. I lost a bet. Nobody thought you'd come tonight. Why? Oh, I can't wait to see the old gang. Oh, the gang or Paul. <laughs> Figured in six months you'd forget him, too. Oh, well, it just explains how little I know women. It also explains why you're still in re-ride. <laughs> Touche, Nola. At least no one will ever want my job. What's that supposed to mean? Oh, don't be so edgy, my sweet. My usual muddled way, I was just trying to rewrite the past. Uh, just between the two of us, Nola, do you really think Chuck's death was an accident? Of course I do. Why? Well, I've been thinking. It was Chuck's play. True, it flopped, but who knew that six months ago? It could have been a success. You forget... Half the play was always Paul. I'm remembering. But according to Paul, it all belongs to Paul now. I think People that... like you should never think it could be dangerous. And it could be you'd do anything for Paul. I remember how you handled the police six months ago when they questioned you about Paul. Keep your nose in, rewrite, Drake. That's where it belongs. I better see what Paul's <laughs> doing. You start toward the balcony, but you suddenly stop, Nola, and turn into the bedroom. Nothing could induce you to go out on that balcony again. It's horrible enough to be back in the apartment. And there's Aegon Drake, Nola. He obviously suspects something. Alone in the bedroom, you realize you must be especially clever tonight. You glance in the mirror as you leave the bedroom and smile as the light catches the brilliance of your lucky emerald earring. Oh, there you are, Nola. Yes, Paul. I want you to meet Janet Kimber. Janet, this is Nola Norton, the two women in my dissolute life. <laughs> I leave you two alone so you can compare notes on me. <laughs> well, I'm thrilled to meet you, Miss Norton. Paul's told me so much about you. Well, I'm surprised he had time to remember me when he was producing a play. He must have been busy. Oh, we all worked like fiends, but oh, we had to take a little time off once in a while to relax. It was a lot of work and a lot of fun. And the critics were very kind to you. And now you're launched in a brand new career. <laughs> well, just barely launched, I'd say. No, on the contrary, I feel you're destined for smooth sailing. Uh, perhaps that depends a little on you, Miss Norton. Oh, <laughs> then Paul told you I'm doing tomorrow's column about you. <laughs> yes, he did. Perhaps you'd like a people preview. There's no point in prolonging the suspense, is there, Miss Kimber? Uh, well, I, I would like to know, of course. Well, but... let's let everyone in on it. Everybody! Uh -huh. Everybody! Oh, yeah, yeah. Miss Kimber here is dying to know what I'm saying about on tomorrow's column. I think I can remember it word for word. Here it is verbatim. Janet Kimber, Broadway's latest export to Hollywood, shows up charmingly naive refreshingly beautiful and a great prospect for future ingenue roles. Watch this newcomer climb the stairway to success. Oh. Uh, the viper has lost its sting. I can't oh. believe it. Where's the old Nola we all love and hate? I, uh, well, I'm speechless, I guess. I, I just don't know how to thank you, Miss Norton. Well, if anything I've said pushes you up that ladder, I'm well thanked. <laughs> You've surprised them, haven't you, Nola? And they're all rushing to congratulate Janet, all except Paul. He's leaning against the far wall, a cynical look on his watchful face. A look you don't like, Nola. Because it seems to tell you he's seen through your plan. You withdraw from the group surrounding Janet and walk over to him. What's the matter, Paul? Aren't you pleased? As a fairy godmother, you're a little out of character. When Janet Kimber climbs that stairway, she won't be bothered carrying you on her back. Is that part of your plan? Yes, Paul. I meant to tell you later I fixed it at the office so you can have my old job. Your old job? Why not? You are going to lose Janet, you know. Nobody realizes what failure can be until they meet success head on. All right. You win. I'll take that job, Miss Norton. I'll be the best leg man you ever had. I knew you would, Paul. There's so much we can accomplish together. Sure. Let's drink to the new job and uh, have a sip of the brew that brought poor Chuck down off his balcony. Here you are. He's got. You know I don't drink, Paul. Have you forgotten that in six months, too? No, you don't drink. 
So you couldn't possibly be the woman who was with Chuck the night he died? Was there a woman with him? They found lipstick on a glass. And they found a bottle, although I'd taken all his money. Chuck might have had a bottle hidden in the apartment. Not after the shakedown I'd given the place. No. Someone had been supplying him with liquor. Why? When I find that out, I'll know how to write the third act of this little drama. Oh, excuse me, Nola. Hmm? Well, Mrs. Geisler, come right in. I guess everybody knows Mrs. Geisler. Oh, the owner of the building, of course. And she knows everyone here, I'm sure. She always drops in when she hears a party going on, don't you, Mrs. Uh, Geisler? What do you have to drink, Mrs. Geisler? Oh, drop a sherry, Paul. When a body reaches my age, every drink calls for two tablespoons of soda. Oh, no. <laughs> well, well, the old gang is now assembled. Yes, yes, indeed. And Nola, my, you're a pretty sight for old eyes. Why, it seems only yesterday you used to come here for Chuck's coffee. It's hard to believe that the fabulous Nola Norton was Chuck's girl Friday only six months ago. And such a time she had with him, too, when he was in his cup. <laughs> he used to lock himself in so she couldn't get his coffee. I finally had to give her a key. You had a key, Nola? That's right. You know how troublesome Chuck could be after the third day in the fourth bottle. You know something, Penwoman? Chuck called me up the night he died and said he was firing you. Oh, interesting, Aegon. Mm-hmm. He said he was firing you for his own protection. Now, why would any man want protection from a dish like you? You know, the police asked me exactly that same question. Mm -hmm. And what did you tell them? That Chuck never missed firing me every time he had a hangover. Now, if there are any other questions the police miss, this is a good time to ask them. It'll be a long time before I go slumming again. No, no, Drake didn't mean anything. Uh, well, <laughs> well the, the wine is running out, Paul, and so am I. Last week, I misspelled a uh, misspelled comma slip through, and Mac is on my neck. Thanks for the party. Let's not do it again. Uh, I'll trundle along, too, Paul. The building inspectors were by again today and got me all upset. Nothing ever suits them. Why not try a coat of paint? It might be worth the cost. Stop it, Nola. You don't have oh, to go... Oh, that's all right, Paul. Well, is everybody walking out on me? Janet? Sorry, Paul. I have an early studio call. I'll call you tomorrow. Now, I'm tempted to say alone at last, Paul, dear, but it seems to have a hollow sound, doesn't it? Does it? Well, the party was all staged. Good try, Paul. But it didn't work. You killed Chuck, didn't you, Nola? Pushed him off the balcony so his column would be all yours. Aegon Drake thinks you did it, so his play would be all yours. Mrs. Geisler knows you had a key to the apartment. Well, she knows you did too, darling. But the man in the liquor store knows who bought Chuck's brand of scotch that night. That little man with the thick lenses? He can't be two feet in front of him. I wasn't that stupid, Paul. No, you weren't that stupid, Nola. But you did kill Chuck, didn't you? Of course I did. But you'll never prove it with the kind of circumstantial evidence you have. Oddly enough, it isn't all circumstantial, Nola. You recognize this? Why, it's... I found Chuck, remember, Nola? And I found this caught in his sweater. But you, you... Did you have three emerald earrings, Nola? It isn't mine. I have my earrings. I'm wearing them. It may take time to find the jeweler who made the exact duplicate of the one you lost. But I have time, and the police have time. I'm not afraid of the police, Paul. You should be, though. You withheld evidence. That earring. And more than that, if you really want to play that way, I'll say you stole one of my earrings shortly before Chuck was killed, and that's why I had a duplicate made. It'll never work, Nola. It's a standoff, darling. We both had a motive for killing Chuck. Forget it, Paul, dear. I'm going now. I'll see you at the office. You know I'm not going to work for you. You'd better. Janet Kimber's going to bypass you, darling. You'll need something to fill your time. I'll be glad to do that. There's so much you don't know, Nola. Janet and I have been married for three months. I... I don't believe it. You couldn't have married her. But I did. The two of you must have laughed at me. Well, I'm laughing now, Paul, and I'll keep on laughing all the time you're in prison. I'll take that earring. Paul's don't know where he'll find it this time. Nola, give me that earring. Wait, what are you doing? I'm telling the world you tried to kill me just like you killed Chuck. I'll scream it from the balcony. I'll scream you're trying to do it right now. Nola, don't go out there. You can't. Oh, can I? I'll show you. I'll break the doors down if I have to. Nola, stop. Stop. <laughs> Reduce the scent and wear 50%. And new Signal Premium Motor Oil also stops acid corrosion and rust. Reduces scent and wear 50%. In addition, new Signal Premium Motor Oil keeps oil rings clean and free. 
reduces engine wear 50%. And new Signal Premium motor oil prevents sticking of hydraulic valve lifters, also controls and reduces harmful engine deposits such as carbon, gum, and varnish. Yes, in addition to cutting in half engine wear due to lubrication, Signal's amazing new motor oil helps in all these important extra ways to keep maintenance costs down and driving pleasure up. In fact, you can now keep that light new pep and power in your car twice as long if you'll just remember to get your next oil change at a Signal service station. Get it changed to new Signal Premium, the wonderful Signal motor oil that reduces engine wear due to lubrication 50%. Reduces engine wear 50%. The crowd gathered quickly, the stunned and the curious, staring at the broken, lifeless body on the pavement. Someone hurriedly turned on the garage floodlight, and the area suddenly became bright and unreal. From the floors above, white faces looked down on the scene as a man wrested a small, brilliant object from the dead person's hand, a single emerald earring. Oh, oh my, oh my. Oh, I came as soon as I could. What happened? It was Nola. Oh. I tried to warn her. She was determined to go out on the balcony. But, Paul, the French doors, surely you kept them... They were locked. Nola pushed them open. And before I could stop her, she fell right through the scaffolding where the old balcony used to be. Oh, Paul. Why, I thought everyone knew the building inspector condemned that old balcony. Made us tear it down. Start building a new one. It's funny, in a way... I guess Nola's the only one who didn't know that balcony is gone, Mrs. Geisler. What are we going to do? There's nothing we can do now, Mrs. Geisler, except call the police and report another accident. Let that whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Sunday night at this same time. Throughout the seven Pacific Coast states, the same independently operated signal service stations who help you go farther with signal gasoline are now prepared to reduce your engine wear due to lubrication 50% with the amazing new Signal Premium Motor Oil. Why not let a friendly signal dealer change your motor oil tomorrow? Featured in tonight's story were Bill Foreman, Betty Lou Gerson, Ted Osborne, Isabel Randolph, Alice Backus, John Stevenson, and George Neese. The Whistler was produced and directed by George W. Allen, with story by Ardith Hitchcock, music by Wilbur Hatch, and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. The Whistler is entirely fictional, and all characters portrayed on The Whistler are also fictional. Any similarity of names or resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Remember at this same time next Sunday, another strange tale by The Whistler. Marvin Miller speaking for the Signal Oil Company. Stay tuned now for Our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Uh -huh.